Hi there, I'm Kit with SVJDR. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to import an existing file, create this location symbol from scratch, then animate it only using the position animator. For the animation part, skip the video to the 2 minute 34 second mark. I will start a new project by uploading a static SVG that I've already created in SVJDR. Here it is, just a simple illustration of a landscape. I'm going to now draw the location symbol, but first I want to enable the back grid here. I also want to enable the snap to grid option for a precise drawing. There. From the toolbar up here, I'm going to select the ellipse and start drawing it here by holding the left click. To create a perfect circle, hold down the shift key on your keyboard and draw it from the center. Also hold down the alt key or option key if you're using a Mac. I'm now selecting the transform tool and readjusting the circle's position in the canvas. From the right sidebar here, I'm going to change its color. Click here to open the fill options and freely choose a new color. This red will work just fine. Now before continuing, I want to first create a duplicate of this circle. Select the circle, right click, copy and paste options, and then duplicate. Hold shift and scale down the new circle a little bit and let's change its color so we can actually see it. Click on the eyedrop option here next to the fill color and pick white from the canvas. Okay, now I'm going to work on the red circle and change its shape to look like the location symbol. But for that, I must convert the circle into a path. So right click, then choose convert to path. There. From the toolbar, select the node tool or simply press A on your keyboard. Because our circle is now a path, I can edit all the nodes that you see here. I'll start with this node by moving it down just about here. This should look more pointy. So to make this joint sharp, I'm going to choose the first node type option here. The side nodes also need some adjustment, so with both of them selected, choose the fourth node type option. This option allows me to move the bezier handle of a node without affecting the other one. I'm moving them the same distance to keep it symmetrical and make it look more accurate. And maybe I'll also scale the white circle a little bit more. Great. Now let's start animating it. First, let's select both of our elements and create a group. So with both of them selected, right click and group. We now have a single group element to work with. Let's move it down a little and adjust it a little bit more. I just need to find the right position to start the animation from. There. For this animation, two seconds will be enough. So I'll grab this marker and drag it to second two on the timeline. Now click on animate and select position. Choosing an animator for the selected element will automatically add the first keyframe on the timeline right where the playhead is. In this case, the playhead was at second zero. Now I have to define how my element will move. I want it to move up with a transition of one second. To do so, I'll drag the playhead to the one second mark. Then move my element upwards to define the distance it will animate in this one second transition. Notice that a new keyframe was automatically added to mark the new position and the transition between the two keyframes was created. That was simple, right? But we're not quite done yet. I want the location symbol to move back to its starting point with a transition of another second. So I'll drag the playhead to the end of my animation and move the element down. The snap to grid option, which is still enabled, helps me to place it perfectly right at the original point. But there's also another way which will 100% guarantee you will get the exact same state of any animation from a certain second. First, let's undo that last step and go back to the first keyframe. Right click on it, then duplicate. Keep in mind that the duplicated keyframe will be added at the playhead's position, in this case, at the end of my animation. Okay, now let's hit play or press the space bar on your keyboard. We've got a perfect loop animation of a floating location symbol, but something doesn't feel quite right yet. The animation is linear. To fix this, click the position animator in the timeline to select all of its keyframes. Then click on the easing icon here. From the presets list, select ease out sign, and then let's play it again. It looks way better now, and it feels more like it's floating. Now let's export it. Choose SVG from the export list, and let's apply some export settings. Set the iterations to infinite to have an infinite loop, and let's change the speed as well. How about 120% to make it a little bit faster? To view the new settings, you have to click on Refresh Preview here. There you go. Now all that's left is to export it. Click on the Export button and there you have it. 
Your animated SVG file is ready. Let's go to the download folder and open it in a browser. I'll open it in Google Chrome. Here it is. A scalable SVG animation of a floating location symbol that weighs only 49 kilobytes, made in just a few minutes. I hope that you've enjoyed this tutorial. See you in the next one.